Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is HUD? The draw material nodes. This video is going to comprise of three different nodes. We have the draw material simple, draw material, and draw material triangle. And these nodes are intended to basically take a material and put it on the screen using our HUD event. In this example, if I hit play, we see this material right here being drawn in the top left corner. Now, it is not using transparency because that's the way I designed the material to be. Using the material instead of a texture gives us better control of what's going to be displayed. So let me go and cover the node and go from here. As this is a draw node, the target will be self. You don't have to worry about changing that. Our material will be the material we want to use. If we were to go ahead and open up this material and pull it up, we're going to find these options. You don't have a ton of options when you're working with user interface materials. You're going to want them to be in the surface domain. You're going to want the shading model to be unlit. And then the blend mode is basically your choice. By default, it's set to opaque, which is why we can see our border here. But if we were to change this to translucent and piped in our alpha channel, you're going to see it's now going to observe that properly. We'll go ahead and save and apply this and run this. And now you'll see our image works like we expected. So for the other nodes that we have available inside of here, not the nodes, the other inputs, we have basically where it is, what's the size of it, and what's the scaling. So X and Y, where do we want it? In this case, we'll move it over 100 by 100, 100, not 1,000. And then we'll set the width and the height. So by default, for example, if you did 0 and 0, well, you're not going to see anything. Even though my image is 512 by 512 inside this material, it doesn't care. The material itself has no real settings or size. It's whatever we tell it to draw on. we basically giving it a surface to draw this material on. We're going to do a quad. So in this case, I might want 128 by 128. I hit play, and then I have my little logo here. Now keep in mind, because we set this up X and Y 100, it is over 100 by 100. Our scaling adjusts this. So scale of 2, hit play. Now we have a 128 by 128 image scaled up by 2 at this position, 100 by 100. If we were to check scale position and hit play, we're going to get a different result. This basically tells it to take our scale and multiply our position by the scale and offset it. So now we have a 200 by 200 offset and then a 256 by 256 image because we're scaling by two. This is useful if you need to just simply offset the entire UI because you're scaling things. Now, after the draw material simple, we have our actual draw material node. And we'll go ahead and take a look at this now. The draw material node is very similar to our draw material simple, except we get extra options. Let me go ahead and hide these for now. If you've seen the texture video, then you'll know the basics here. It's very similar. We have our material. What material are we going to draw? Where is it at? Well, this is the same settings we have here and the size of it. Let me change this to 128 to 128 because that's what the numbers I like. Our next ones are our U, V, and our width. These are our basically where does our material start on this quad. 0, 0 is the top left. 1, 1 is the bottom right. And then how much of that material are we going to use? So in this case, if I draw this, we're going to see our material rotated because I forgot to uncheck this. So let's reset this back to 0. There we go. Let's hide that again. We're going to see our 128 by 128 image and the full texture is going to be displayed. And of course we can offset that. We can say, okay, start the texture in the middle and display the whole thing. And this will give us this weird little offset. Or we could say, you know what? No, start in the top left. I want the actual texture to start normal, but I only want half of the texture. We can hit play. And now we only see half of the texture being drawn. Well, in this case, half of the material being drawn, not the texture. Our hidden options are the scale and position, same rules over here. 
and then our rotation, which you accidentally already saw. And this is pretty simple. Default rotation and default axis is going to be zero. That means it's going to rotate zero degrees along the top left corner. Zero, zero is top left. One, one is bottom right. So what we can do to rotate around the middle is we set our axis to the middle, tell our rotation like something like 180 degrees, and this will end up giving us an inverted image. We're rotating around the middle 180 degrees. Of course, if you want to rotate it anywhere else, you can set your rotational pivot to a different area. You'll notice it's still upside down, but instead of rotating it here around the middle, we rotated it around this bottom corner and then spun it 180 degrees. So again, rotational pivot, where on that material are we going to rotate around, and then how much are we going to rotate it? Our last node is the draw material triangle. Now this one's a little bit more interesting. Let's go and run this and hit play, and we're going to see this. We're actually going to see the bottom right corner. Now it may seem a little weird, but let me actually change our material back to opaque so we can get more of a clean understanding of what's going on. We'll hit play, and now you'll actually see a triangle. Remember the node we're using is draw material triangle, and that's the result we get. If you've ever worked with triangles inside the engine and you understand how they work, basically you draw them in counterclockwise order. So bottom left, the bottom right, and then the top right, and then the triangle finishes itself. So for example, we'll define this point, define this point, define this point, and then the triangle finishes itself. So that's how we define a triangle strip. To define the next one, we would do again, we could do this one, then this one, and then the top one, and it'll close it off. And if I actually hook this up, you'll see that right here. This looks the same as our draw material node, except I'm drawing it out of two triangles. Now the advantage to drawing it out of the two triangles is it gives us finer control over the size of it, and it also gives us the ability to make a non-square material. That is something to keep in mind. With the material triangles, we can make things of odd shapes based on our inputs. Now in terms of the inputs, we have a material input, so whatever material we want to draw, we have three vertex positions. Remember again, it's the you're drawing it in counterclockwise order. So in this case, I'm defining the bottom left, the bottom right, and then I'm defining the top right, and then it'll close it as a triangle. For this one, it's the bottom left, the top right, and then the top left, and it closes the triangle. After that, you have your UVs for each of the vertex. Basically, on your vertexes, where in the UV map does this fall? Remember, our UVs are 0, 0 top left, 1, 1 bottom right. So in this case, my first vertex is right here. How far on the X is it, or the U? Well, it's 0. How far on the Y is it? Well, it's 1. It's the bottom left corner. So our vertex point is 0, 1. Our next vertex point which is the bottom right corner in this white case would be here. So it would be one on the U and one on the Y, which we can define right here. So by filling these out, it allows me to draw my material how I want it. But of course, this is all personal preference. You can change these things. If you don't want that to be the full width, for example, so like, for example, I wanted the X to be 0.5 and the Y to be 0.5 in this one, you're gonna find that I get a distorted image because we're drawing the full length up here but the half length right here. So we get a weird looking effect. That's simply because we're basically only using part of our material instead of the entire material. So we could get something like this, for example, if we only use half of it rather than the full thing. Obviously, personal preference, you do what you want with this. In terms of actual uses, maybe if you want to do something different or odd or you want to change the actual dimensions of your item because for example we want to let's say we want the x to be 110 uh, let's see let's see this is our first one this is the bottom uh, there we go bottom left this is the one i meant to do so let's say this is 150 for example you can end up with something like this this is the biggest difference between using the material uh triangle version of this compared to the material version now, if you notice i can alter my vertexes so I can get this little bit of a different look. 
So for example, you know, the top left corner, let's see, that would be my third position here. I could have this move down to 50, for example. We end up with an effect like this, where we just get these really weird looking effects. We could move things over, but maybe a melting effect or a flag effect, or basically we want to draw a material on a surface that is not a square quad. That is what the material triangles allow us to do. So that's it. That's going to wrap up our draw material nodes. Remember, we have the simple one. Simply slap a material somewhere and define a size. The draw material normal node, slap a material somewhere, define its size, and define how the material UVs are laid out with the optional rotational values. And then our triangles, which actually allow us to draw triangle material strips instead of quads and give us full control over the UVs and their positioning.